I am Rahul Shah. I am a partner with Kotak Data Center Fund. It's an eight hundred million dollar fund which we have raised early this year. It's one of the first data center fund focused on investing into data centers in India, and it's an operator agnostic platform. Uh, we are very bullish about the data center market in India, and that's the reason why we have come out with a very specific niche asset class strategy uh, in Kotak. Kotak Alternate Assets is a eighteen billion dollars of assets under management, probably one of the largest uh, domestic alternate asset managers. And within those, we have got multiple strategies. We started with real estate, private equity. Now we have expanded to multiple other verticals, including infrastructure, <clears throat> special situations, pre-IPOs, and uh, data center. Uh, we have uh, been very successful in investing into real estates, into infrastructure, and uh, now we thought that the time has come for investing into digital infrastructure. And uh, uh, the time is right from an India perspective. We have seen. this market very closely for the last 5 to 8 years and uh, we are seeing the market evolve very rapidly we thought that it's it's a perfect time for us to come out with the strategy and focus on uh, very closely work with dc operators in the country if you look at indian data center market it uh, will look a very similar to what you would see in usa unlike what you see in china so in china you have got domestic cloud players like baidu tencent etc who are dominating the cloud play but in india you will have the us hyperscalers like microsoft amazon google who are the predominant cloud cloud players and uh, by corollary they are one of the biggest consumers of data center capacities so we see indian data center market very much like us wherein you have got us cloud hyperscalers who are consuming a lot of data center capacities and they continue to build out on their capacities significantly uh, so far as uh, capacities are concerned all of these players have not just uh, you know significantly ramped up their capacities with dc operators but also have started building their own data centers and that's that's coming of age for the dc market in india because it actually uh, brings in a lot of conviction from the us hyperscalers that this market in india has evolved from an early stages to a mature phase wherein they have seen uh, you know very good operator track records in terms of dc performance for the last 8 to 10 years and on the back of that they have decided that they will also uh, want to build out their own data centers so a significant uh, you know confidence uh, put into the dc market in india by us hyperscalers and we we see them continue to build it out not just for india but from india for the asian markets so india's optic fiber cable network uh, uh, from you know it it's broken up into two parts one is the cable landing stations which come into india and the second is your broadband network within the country uh, so far as the international cable landing stations are concerned uh, there has been capacity additions already announced and you know those capacities will give us enough headroom for the next at least i would say 10 years in terms of how much capacities can india uh, manage now coming to the local broadband networks indian broadband networks have been continuously reinforced by the uh, investment into various telecom equipments over the period uh, which means that you know you get very good latency indicators across multiple metro cities in the country uh, when you go to tier 2 cities it's still early days because the data center uh, network today or the data center capacities are predominantly being uh, housed into metro uh, cities uh, primarily being bombay mumbai delhi uh, hyderabad and chennai uh, you will see edge networks coming in you will see a lot of iot applications is requiring edge capacities you will see even ai requiring a lot of edge capacity demands uh, over the period of time uh, we will see significant investments happening in tier 2 cities for the broadband networks to support such kind of demands which will come in place but so far as the current uh, outlay of data centers which are happening for the next 5 to 7 years the broadband network seems to be robust enough
it's not as if you can build up data centers everywhere. It's a, a lot determined by where your hyperscalers or cloud providers or content providers want you to build up your data centers. And they have got a lot of uh, requirements, not just in terms of physical requirements, wherein you know you have to comply with a lot of the norms. Uh, there is a long list of some 200 plus requirements you have to comply with before you can say that, yes, this region is uh, good for data centers. Uh, it could mean in terms of you know where exactly are they located, how much network connectivity do they have? Is there enough power availability in that region? Uh, is the access, uh, you know, is it closer to any other infrastructure, public infrastructure, which will hinder, uh, you know, security requirements for cloud? So those are all physical requirements, right? But on top of it, uh, the cloud providers also have a lot of their own internal designing requirements. For example, they go out into a certain region and as they call it, there is an availability zone being created over there. So depending on how their availability zones are created, they would want to decide that, yes, from here on, depending on uh, how much capacities I want to design for a certain region and then move to the second zone, uh, they will decide which regions uh, you know, really build up as data center uh, parks or data center zones. So it's, it's unlike any other real estate or a warehousing or a logistics where where you know that broadly you know <clears throat> once you have uh, built it up in certain regions logistics will work not so much in data centers it's all demand driven it's a very dynamic and a very very exciting phase rory because um, as everybody has <clears throat> become conversant with chat gpt people have opened up to a lot of um, AI and a generative AI kind of uh, requirements. A lot of developers have started working on it, which means that, and, and you, you yourself would have seen that uh, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, everybody's working on building up their own generative AIs, which itself means that there is a lot of developer demand which will get created. Now, just to give you some context, a particular, you know, kind of, action which you do in a chat GPT would require multifold amount of data center capacity versus a typical general chat, right? Which means that for doing a lot of AI workflow, you need to build up significant amount of data center capacities. And those data center capacities require a lot of GPUs rather than your normal servers, which means that they are very power dense. They are required to, you know, uh, within AI also, there is a lot of learning AIs, which you don't need to be necessarily very close to the demand. Uh, and then you have got a production AI, which requires you to be very close to the demand. So the type of designs which you have for data centers, which are catering to these kind of demands will be very different. And early days, so everybody's, uh, you know, grappling with uh, what eventually it will mean in terms of size and scale. But it will be very fair to say that it's going to open up a, a significant amount of data center potential, uh, but it will be also significantly different in terms of both design specs and how you address and meet those demands. We have seen a data protection bill for India, which was put up in 2019, some, somewhere around that, after which there has been an overhaul, which has happened last year. Possibly, uh, we will see how it actually impacts. But uh, the way I see it globally, how it's happening with US, with Europe and GDPR, uh, increasingly, I feel that uh, there will be a significant amount of protection for citizens' data. There is going to be a lot of requirements from the from individual governments to say that sensitive data with respect to either financial transactions or be it very sensitive transactions. Uh, with related to government organizations or defense need to be housed primarily in, in their own region. Also, uh, you know, uh, you know, a couple of interesting things which were discussed during the, uh, you know, Indian uh, bill uh, redrafting is reciprocity, wherein uh, if the other country is allowing you to save their data in their own country, only then will you allow 
them to save their data in their own country. So uh, unless, for example, if US doesn't allow uh, its citizens data to be saved in India, then India will not allow US companies to save Indian citizens data in USA. So it's it's very fair and those kind it's very emerging in a way because people are still trying to find out what's the settled norm in terms of uh, data privacy and data protection bills. But fair to say that everybody would want to have a significant amount of control in terms of the data which is getting created about their citizens in their country. And um, which also means that uh, you know India being one of the largest consumers of data and the largest creators of data uh, will also continue to be one of the significant data center markets in the country, in the world. Uh, uh, also, India has come, come out with interesting concept of, uh, you know, uh, creating silos, which will mean that uh, international organizations can create data center capacities in India, where the Indian government will not have access. So uh, some sort of a consular data centers, right? And uh, that will mean that uh, several countries who would want to have a backup being created of their uh, very sensitive data, they will be able to create that in India. So all the uh, actions which are taken by the Indian government are, are in the right direction. And we feel very positive about the work which has been done over there. Given that data centers consume significant amount of power, uh, ESG is on topmost on the agenda for any data center operator and not just the operator, but even the consumer who is the hyperscaler, which means that there has been significant amount of efforts being put in by uh, the data center operators to ensure that they get as much of renewable power tied up for the powers which is being consumed by these data centers. <clears throat> in fact, there is a mandate which the cloud players are putting up on the DC operators to say that we will give you business only if you are able to provide good amount of renewable capacity tied up for this within the next three to five years. So India is uh, you know, very sweetly placed in this because in India, you have got ample amount of renewable power in the form of wind and solar. And that comes not at a higher cost, but at a lower cost. So which means that it's not, not just environmentally friendly, but also uh, commercially makes sense. And it's viable and feasible, unlike a lot of other regions in the world. So ESG really is on at the forefront. But going beyond just power consumption, there are several other layers in ESG which have to be looked at. So in terms of water consumption, which happens in terms of cooling, there are a lot of water-based coolers, right? So those are being phased out to air-based coolers. But at the same time, you have to improve your PUEs, which is your power efficiency in the building. If you are able to improve that, which itself means that you are consuming less power per data, which is being processed in the data center. So a lot of work on designs which are happening. If you were to move eventually to liquid cooling, it would significantly drop down the PUEs. Mm -hmm. Although it's expensive today, but there is a lot of work being done on that to improve its technology. Uh, so we would see that in the coming years, there will be various design changes which will happen in the data centers to ensure that we are able to be as uh, ESG friendly as possible. There are only two questions which come to the top of my mind. <clears throat> uh, if, if I am looking at investing into data centers as a market in India, and uh, we are talking to multiple data center operators, uh, the first question which comes to our mind is, what is hyperscaler thinking and what are his needs? Are we addressing them and are we able to go one, two, three steps more than what they want because they are the largest customers for the uh, business in, in data centers. So that's number one. So to be able to understand what hyperscalers want. And the second is, as we talked about it during this, that what are the emerging trends in terms of technology and what would it mean in terms of data centers, its designs, the way we operate data centers, the way we think about building the infrastructure, where is it built? How do you think about power? How do you think about liquid cooling? How do you think about generative AIs? What would it mean in terms of data center? So 
technology is 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 at the core over here so what what are the emerging technologies and what would it mean in terms of its impact on data centers we have seen the data center market evolve we have seen it go from very small enterprise data center uh, infrastructure to hyperscale data centers and now we are seeing uh, several players come into the market and we are also seeing hyperscalers themselves built out their own data centers uh, given the amount of changes which are happening in the market it's it's very exciting to uh, you know just uh, be able to ensure that you stay abreast with what what are the changes which are happening